of the interesting things is that as we talk about the internet, we often talk about democratizing. We want this all to be more accessible. We want it to be more open. We're really worried about gatekeepers. We're really worried that whoever edits that newspaper is a gatekeeper. They're, they're preventing certain voices from being heard. They're not preventing other voices from being heard. I, I want to suggest that that gatekeeping function might be very important. And as we change it, we bump into all sorts of other problems. So here's another way to do gatekeeping. Here's Reddit. This is one of many community edited sites out there. There's also Dig, there's things like Stumbled Upon. These sites rely on the idea that they're going to lay out a front page based on what the community votes and says is most interesting on any given day. So when you see a site like this, you're seeing something at the top because people thought it was important. In this case, they think it's really important that people uh, who procrastinate and put uh, time off from work get to vote for that. Um, the second idea is having a, a US comedian moderate US presidential debates. If you start wondering how a page like this gets laid out, it's probably worth asking the question, who's laying out that page? And we know with Reddit, and it's, it's an interesting group of people. It's 92% of them are male. 70% um, of them are from the US. Uh, lots and lots and lots of them are students or are, are workers in the IT industry or in universities. Um, they tend very far to the left in terms of US politics. In terms of US politics, you would see 45% Republican. They're only 6% Republican. They're really unusual in a whole bunch of ways. Now, here's the interesting thing. That description actually describes me pretty well. I'm about 92% male and about 70% US based and you know my politics fit in there somewhere. So I, I actually find this pretty useful. I find this a pretty comfortable community and it's a site that I go to a lot. And, and, and that's a phenomenon that social scientists call homophily. Homophily is basically a word that means birds of a feather flock together. Um, this happens in all aspects of life. If you move into a new city, you are likely to pick a neighborhood with people from your ethnic group, people from your national origin, people who have a similar educational level to you, people who have the same religion of you. Likely, not guaranteed. I know a lot of us find ways to break these rules. But when you sort of look at it overall, it's a very basic human tendency. You'll see people do this at university. If you go to a university, you'll see people sit down at lunch tables. And it has a lot to do, subtly, in the background, with what we know about each other's status, with each other's education level, each other's language. We sort ourselves. And we sort ourselves into like-minded groups. And this is a very like-minded group. This is a group of people who have common interests in technology, common interests on certain types of politics, and so they flock together and they share information with one another. And here's the problem. Homophily can make you really stupid. And, and this is something that comes up sort of again and again as we move into this new media. Um, we had a presidential election about four years ago in the US. And a lot of people who were very, very active online were convinced that this politician named Howard Dean was going to win. And Dean was very, very far to the left. No one had really ever heard of him. He was a bit of a nut job. But people were really convinced that he had a chance. And of course, he got killed. He got clobbered. He lost by enormous margins. He never even made it through the primary system. But people who had listened online listen to their friends, and all their friends were for Howard Dean, so everybody must be for Howard Dean. We must just not be hearing it. If we're only listening to people who have the same background, who listen to the same sources of information, if we're only hanging out with the same flock of sheep, we end up missing a lot about the world. One of the problems is that these new tools that we're developing rely very heavily on communities and they rely on self-selected communities. So when you're looking at how you get information, when we're looking at who is the gatekeeper for your information, it's worth asking, how am I working with this person and how are they choosing to filter the information? There's sort of three models that are coming out nowadays. There's a professional gatekeeper 
and we all know sort of the biases of the newspapers we read. We pick one that's to the left or to the right, depending on how our politics are. If we're really good, we might read multiple papers to get multiple perspectives. But we are getting it through the perspective of that gatekeeper. When we use a site like Reddit or Dig, we're letting a community do that gatekeeping. And it's very important that we think about who's in that community and what are their perspectives and what are their biases. We also get things from individuals and everyone knows that there's nothing more biased than an individual. And you're getting that individual's biases and prejudices. And by the way, you're likely to get news from individuals who share common demographic characteristics with you. If you're an IT worker, you're likely to be reading IT workers. If you're a political activist, you're likely to be reading political activists. What I'm really interested in is how, when we build new information interfaces, how do we get serendipity? How do we get that piece of information, that web page, that story, that photograph, that is really appropriate to us? It's something that we really need to know. We didn't know we were looking for it. We stumble upon it, and it's just what we were looking for. For me, the place that I have this experience most often is in libraries old-fashioned paper libraries where I can go and look in the shelves. Because I'm looking in more or less the right area, I'm in more or less the right subject, but I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, and it catches my eye and I grab it and it's what I needed. And this turns out to be very, very difficult to engineer. You know, Google tries it with I'm feeling lucky. It's, a, it's close, but Google's really guessing. What we're looking for is something that's much more like an informed recommendation. And you see this sometimes on, on film recommendation sites. This is from Netflix, which is a film subscription service in the US. I sign up for this, I watch films, I send them back, I rate them, they send me more films. And they can see that I'm obsessed with documentaries, that I've watched some anime films, so they want to show me Cowboy Bebop. These are pretty good suggestions. I will say at the same time, they're also predictable suggestions. It's telling me that I want to watch The Wire because I just watched the last season of The Wire. So it's telling me that I want to watch the next season of it. I just watched a popular piece of anime. It tells me that I want to watch more anime. It's seen that I've rented 40 documentaries. It gives me the best documentaries. This isn't a real surprise. This may not be as close to serendipity as we'd really like to be. And this, by the way, has the same problem. Basically what it's doing is it's grouping me with other people who like documentaries and like anime and then it's telling me what they like. What this system is never going to do is send me one of these movies. And this is the most popular site right now for buying films made in Nigeria, or as people call it, Nollywood. Because it's just an entirely different community. The community that's using Netflix and the community that's using these Nollywood films are totally separate. And right now, they're not finding ways to talk to one another, even if there's a Nigerian film that would be really interesting and really appropriate to what I'm thinking about. So the last thing I want to talk about is sort of how you cross that chasm. How do you decide that you want to get information from sort of deeply outside of the universe where you normally spend your time? And let me tell you, it's hard. You know, even if you decide that you're going to start reading the Lagos Daily Sun, you're probably going to find this newspaper pretty confusing. And even if your English is perfect, you're going to find this extremely confusing. Um, because even though they're speaking the same language, they're not speaking the same language. Um, there's so many things that you need to know about Nigeria and about Nigerians and about how Nigeria works before you could read this newspaper. You can think the same thing about any other countries that are very, very culturally different but have a common language. It just happens that English is a lingua franca in some remarkably different countries. And you can have this really interesting disjoint. But to read this paper, you need some things. You need someone to filter it. You need someone to go through and say, hey, you're not going to care about those three stories. But this story might be really interesting to you. You need someone to translate. This paper is probably written in some sort of a combination of English and Hausa. And you need someone to translate the house of words for you. But even more than that, every country has its own slang. It's got its own dialect. And someone has to walk you through it. Um, you know, it, it, when you're talking with Dutch people and they use the word gezellig for the first time, someone really has to explain that to you, because it doesn't translate very well between languages. And someone also